Well, I'm out here. At no point during the COVID-19 crisis was dispersed camping in the national forests ever prohibited in Oregon. We were asked to stay home while at the same time encouraged to stay healthy with socially distanced outdoor recreation. Interpret that as you will, I guess. I chose not to travel in any way for several weeks out of concern for unknowingly carrying the virus into rural communities, replacing any kind of strain on first responder and healthcare resources on the slim chance something were to go wrong while I was out there. Now, restrictions are easing and, here in Oregon anyway, our local healthcare systems are not overwhelmed in the least. Quite on the contrary, the only thing our hospitals here are suffering from is a lack of patients. This will be a zero contact excursion into central Oregon, traveling solo, going from home to wilderness and home again, making no stops aside from one self-service gas station. My weekly trip to the grocery store is far more dangerous. Well, I'm not making very good progress today. I keep stopping to take in this Vista. We've got three sisters over there, Mount Washington, Three Finger Jack, and Mount Jefferson. Today I'm traveling via a new route up into an area I visited almost exactly a year ago. I did not camp on that trip, but I had found a campsite I've been dreaming of returning to ever since. Wow, well, I am stunned by how many people are out here. I really did not anticipate that. Uh, I know it's a nice weekend and restrictions are starting to lift. Um, but I mean, it's still mid-afternoon on a weekday. I thought that I might sort of beat people to the punch a little bit. I wonder if my campsite is going to be available. Last time I was up in this area was almost exactly a year ago, but I was out here on a weekday and there was nobody out here. But here it is, a lovely Friday, after people have been cooped up for a couple of months. And uh, I'm not going to be surprised if there's someone in my campsite. It definitely takes away some of that sense of being in the remote wilderness when you see people every five minutes. That looked like maybe it could have been interesting. When you see people every five minutes and there's people in every campsite. Oh, and then when you see people who actually recognize you. So yeah, when I was airing down earlier, a viewer stopped to say hi and show me his adaptation of my Unistrut roof rack. Uh, this little spur caught my eye. This was not my plan campsite, but it looks like this could lead to something interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty nice sight. It's not quite as nice as the one that I'm hoping to score, but we'll keep this in mind. I'll mark it on the guy app. Yeah, this is it, but I think I see somebody out there. Yep, I see a hammock. I see a rig. Definitely someone out there. I wasn't looking for a campsite when I was out this way a year ago, but I was enchanted by this spot and had been hoping to finally camp here tonight. Dang, someone in my spot. I'm not surprised. There's another one right up here that I also found last time. I feel like it might be a little close to these people check it out. Actually, this is a little further away from the other campsite than I remembered. Oh, this is very nice. This is absolutely as nice. Well, I'm not super fond of how close this is to the road and how visible it is from the road, but that is the view I was after. 
I love the panorama of this treeless canyon overlooked by rocky crags. Mount Hood is visible in the distance, along with the top of Mount Jefferson. The original planned campsite is off that direction, but I can't see those people at all. It's actually further up the road than I remembered. So that's good. I think this will be fine. That should be level enough for the kitchen. I guess we're gonna find out how the gazelle does in the wind. It is windy. I am not underneath any big old trees or any dead limbs or anything like that. Just some young things, so I don't think we've got any widowmaker situations here. You can see some roads and stuff down in there. That's where I'm gonna explore tomorrow and try and get closer to that rock over there. Maybe also closer to the river down there. There's lots of down trees around here, but I don't think I'm gonna really have to forage. There's some wood already right here in camp. Jackery charging the iPad, one of the drone batteries that I just flew, and one of the camera batteries. sun's gone down, the temperature's dropping, and I'm getting hungry, so let's get some dinner going. I'm making one of my camping standbys, which is quesadillas, but with a little bit of a different twist this time. Here I've got the shredded cheese pre-blended with some beans and some leftover rice, and I spiced it up with some red pepper flakes. I got this idea from Tristan of SUV RVing. Got some pretty good breezes going, but the uh, Camp Chef Mountaineer is not having any problem with it. When Tristan of SUV RVing made this, he had a 
an actual recipe of some sort that involved, I think, some like taco spice packet, and he may have had some other ingredients in there. I just kind of made do with what I had. That's the danger with cowboy coffee. You gotta be careful not to boil it over.
Well, I've got the stove cleaned up as well as I could from the little coffee mishap. I'm just gonna make a simple breakfast this morning. I brought some sausages and an egg. got camp all broken down, the car is packed up, and we're ready to go. We're gonna head out down into that area, do some exploring, see if we can get closer to that rock formation out there, maybe up along the river, see what we find. If you wanna see how that goes, tune in for the next episode. Part two, I check out some rock formations. Collect some new pinstripes. And score one of my favorite campsites ever. If you enjoy my videos enough to buy me, say, one cup of coffee a month, consider becoming a supporter of the channel via Patreon. Patrons have access to exclusive extra content and other perks. Thank you for watching.